The war in Ukraine is approaching its one-year anniversary with no end in sight to the fighting or the suffering. Throughout the holiday season, the forces of the Russian Federation continued their strikes on key Ukrainian cities. Too many Ukrainians spent what is normally a festive period in bomb shelters. Far from celebrating, countless families across the country were mourning the loss of loved ones. Thank you, Mr. President. The war in Ukraine is approaching its... It has created a humanitarian and human rights catastrophe, traumatized a generation of children, and accelerated the global food and energy crises. And yet, this grave damage could pale in comparison with the consequences of a prolonged conflict. I said at the outset of my statement that there is no sign of an end to the fighting. The logic that prevails is a military one, with very little, if any, room for dialogue right now. But all wars end, and so too will this one. Ukraine, Russia, the world cannot afford for this war to continue. Just as, just as when we warned this council last January that Russia was planning a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, we also warned this council more recently that Iran and the DPRK planned to transfer prohibited materials to Russia. They have. Since August, Iran has transferred hundreds of UAVs to Russia in violation of UN Security Council Resolution 2231. Сначала мы слово в феврале прошлого года эти планы были сорваны. И закончить эти слово можно будет лишь тогда, когда с территории Украины больше не будет исходить угроза России, и когда закончится дискриминация для русскоязычного населения этой страны. Если же этот результат можно будет достичь с помощью переговоров, мы к такому сценарию готовы. Если же нет, все поставленные задачи будут достигнуты военным путем. Пока же ни киевский режим, ни его западные спонсоры нужных выводов из украинской катастрофы не сделали. Более того, в стране при попустительстве коллективного Запада режим Зеленского превратился в авторитарную диктатуру, что само по себе является существенным препятствием на пути к миру. Украина has been turned into the world's largest minefield of 175,000 square kilometers. The majority of Russian missile and drone attacks has been directed at civilian infrastructure, namely 62% of all strikes. Thousands of residential buildings, houses, schools, kindergartens, hospitals, museums, religious buildings, electricity grids, water grids, railway markets have been either destroyed or heavily damaged. And although we haven't won yet, Russia has already lost. For its final defeat and victory for, of our democracies, another joint action is needed. In this regard, my message is very clear. We need to reinforce sanctions in sector of particular economic importance to Russia. Full oil and gas embargo, disconnection of Russian banks from global financial system is price the aggressor state should pay. It is clear that there is no room for compromise with evil, because if Ukraine stops fighting, it will die. The wall as we know it will die. If Russia stops its aggression, the war will end. It is as simple as that.